Can y'all hear it? Gosh, oh, what is that? Up. Wait a minute. Some music. Yeah, for 2002 tour. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, I remember. Haunts my dreams. <laughs> uh, flashback. Hello, everybody joining. All right, we've got a huge crowd today already lining up. Thank you, guys. Happy Monday. Happy last week of April. Can you believe it? We've got... No, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Where did March and April go? In the Northeast, I think you're having snow and cold and yucky yeah. weather. That's why you winter up north and you, uh, you come down here for mud season in the south. The snowbirds. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So... Looks like we're uh, we're just shaping up here. We'll get started in about a minute. I'm going to start with uh, some housekeeping things, as always, just to keep everybody uh, all in order and check. Make sure you have any questions answered. Um, we've got a great show today. So it's Dill, Dill, the originator on with us today. Give us a little Dillism. We're excited. That's why we're here, I think, most of us. So looking forward to that. So as people continue to line in here, let me just get started. So uh, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, my name is Josh. I think many of you may or may not know me. I run uh, a company called Resource Department with Robert Hell uh, and excited to be here uh, on the Intrepid Spirits Huddle. So thank you guys for joining. Um, if you are here because of the, uh, the email invite, then great. Uh, if there are others here that have received an invite forwarded from somebody else, that's fantastic. You guys. Uh, on the list, please forward to others. We'll add them to the list and make sure that everybody uh, that wants to join the huddle can join the huddle on Monday. Um, as we uh, go through here, this is going to be more interactive session with Dill today. So please don't forget uh, to throw in some things into the chat. You know, we can talk to Dill directly. We'll answer questions from there. Uh, there's also a question area on here that you can uh, send some questions in, but uh, would love to hear your feedback. Uh, would also like you guys to post anything that's made you happy. I know there's lots of uh, lots of things going out there in the world today. So if anything has, even a small thing, uh, has made you happy, or if you have any dedication, please put those in the chat, and we'll read those out uh, at the end. You can find all of uh, the info uh, for today's broadcast and past broadcasts on the Facebook page, Intrepid Spirits on, Sp on Facebook. Please check that out. Um, and I think we're about there. So please contribute here on the question side. I'm going to hand it over to Susan uh, with quick goal and thought of the week. Susan. Hey, thanks. All right. Everybody's present and we're going to have some positive human energy today. Um, thinking through the week, um, especially for those of us in the U.S., is the governors decide who's going to open up and who's not. Let's all try to make a goal to not be judgmental. Um, because there's going to be some people that are raring to go and some people that aren't quite so sure yet. So um, be gentle and, um, you know, you never know what situation the other person's in. So along with having positive human energy, let's um, also be positive and not judge others, even though sometimes their actions may seem kind of strange and weird to us, but that's all right. Um, we got to start with the intrepid spirits. The sea is dangerous and its storms are terrible, but these have never been sufficient reasons to remain ashore. Unlike timid souls, intrepid spirits seek victory over those things that seem impossible. It is with an iron will that they embark on the most daring of all adventures, to meet the shadowy future without fear and conquer the unknown. So let's go conquer that unknown. And so I kind of conquered the unknown probably about, I think it's been 25 years ago. I'll never forget, uh, Robin Smith and I met with this crazy guy in 1995. And he claims he knew he had the job, but he was in total sales mode. And for two hours, he was pitching us on the torch relay. And I remember Robin and I looking at each other when he left and went, how are we ever gonna make 84 days on the road with this guy? We're exhausted. So. 
I made it 25 years. So I think maybe, you know, like hopefully some of us will get the coronavirus immunity. <laughs> I got the dual immunity. So, so it all works out great. So really, really want you guys to send questions, raise your hands, chat, because um, you know that's how dual works best. <laughs> um, so as he goes through this, let's see what he has to say. You're okay. all yours. Welcome to everybody. It's Monday. I gotta tell you, I gotta put my dinky on because I got so nervous thinking about having to do this. Because I, you know, you kind of put yourself out there. I'm gonna start real quick with a thought. A friend of mine, John Wood, sent this poem the other day, and it was interesting to me. Uh, you know, kick off this thing. And people stayed home and read books and listened and they rested. And they did exercises and they made art and played and learned new ways of being and stopped and listened more deeply. Someone meditated, someone prayed, someone met their shadow and people began to heal. And in the absence of people who lived in arrogant ways, dangerous and meaningless and heartless, the earth began to heal. And when the danger ended and the people found themselves, they grieved for the dead and they made new choices. Wow, that could have been written by some famous uh, uh, author today. That was written in 1869. And as I start here, I always wanted to say this, history has a way of repeating itself. You know, and I, we've always said, if you've hung around with me, is you got to know where someone came from to know where they're going, right? So you got to think about that. And, you know, this isn't the first pandemic. It's not going to be the last one, you know? So as we kind of look out over the horizon, another thing that you all know that I believe in pretty harshly is that there are no truly, truly unique ideas. They're few and far between. Because what there is, is new, absolutely spectacular executions. And I use a, an example all the time about our buddy Da Vinci. There's a, a, a drawings and stuff where he, they'll tell you, he invented the computer back while he was painting the Sistine Chapel in Rome. Um, so there you go. That's the thought of that, just to start off. Experience, okay, I've got 10 little... Th uh, sections, if you will, and you stop whenever you want to be holler to stop or send a note and Susan will shut me up and we'll, we'll discuss. But let's talk about experiential marketing. You know, where's it going? What's going to happen? And I, in the past, I always laugh and I say, wow, who remembers OK Soda when we got arrested for throwing soda, three, three cans of OK Soda in a newspaper wrapper? We threw them on lawns all over America. And the next day, the cops are calling Lee Heffernan. And oh my God, you would have thought we were all going to jail. You know, and then you, you marry that with this thing called the Rolling Street Party. You know, I think a bunch of us remember we've been doing those now for what, 25 years on just on the Olympic tour tree. Like, forget about all the other stuff. But can you picture this? This is just a thought kind of the future. Can you imagine sitting on a front porch in a, in a town like Tifton, Georgia? Right. I was sitting with Tom Grant the other day and in this neighborhood, there's kids play. All of a sudden, here comes this really cool. Truck, small truck, inexpensive, nothing fancy, just like the lawnmower trailers, almost of 1996 vintage. And there's four actors on there and they're passing out picket product, M&Ms, and they've got a great script and great music. and Everybody know, oh, by the way, with the internet, everybody knows at 12.15 on Tuesday, the m and M's guys are coming and it's going to be a party. And it just interacts with the folks. I can picture this in my head and go, we, you know, part of me says, I, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go buy a pickup truck and do it myself. So I think it'd be absolutely hilarious because winning brands, you know, they're absolutely going to be focused on this kind of stuff. They're going to be using the five screens absolutely perfectly in sync you know the five screens remember movies television computer cell phone and of course the human touch 
Um, and you know, the guys that execute the best, that really, really have the passion for that execution, they win. They're going to win every time. Experiential marketing is going to come back. It's going to be that rolling street party. We're not going to necessarily stand at a subway, although Joe Ellinger sent an idea this morning, which I thought was amazing. So there's a company called Reckus. They're a European company. They make the, one of the products they have is Lysol. Can you imagine sitting in at London at a bus stop or a, a tube stop or New York or Chicago or you name it, right? And here's, I, I can picture, uh, let's pick on somebody. Jamie Pazol is sitting there and she is handing out Lysol, little individual uh, wipes as an example. Clorox could do it too. Things like that are going to happen. And it'll be interesting to see who goes first, right? But it's going to happen, people. And uh, I think there's people on this phone that have the, uh, that have the opportunity to lead the way um, in how it, what does that look like in a safe environment? Um, it's going to be fun. I can tell you it's going to be fun. Is there any questions? Comments? Before I move on to number two? Yeah, Joe, we got something real quick from uh, Twiggy. So looks like how to incorporate safety uh, as first an overarching concern and guide of new marketing. So I think overall question about how to incorporate safety as we as we go into this new area. Okay, awesome. Yeah, we have, yeah, and, and I think you all remember the safety, security, and smiles, right? Safety, security, smiles. Safety is always first. The safety factor, I believe, people are going to come up with. You know, right today, I guess if you're in, in Manhattan, you know, you've got the mask, the gloves. I would have a hat, personally. Um, but my sense is the safety factor is going to be developing um, tools. And I think, like, you're gonna, uh, I wear a, 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 a neckerchief, like, across my nose. And, you know, like, I look like, uh, you know, Wild Bill Hickok, right, was um, out, and, out and about. I think people will come up with unique ways of protecting themselves. And I think also there'll be p people, in my opinion, people are good people. People are, if they don't feel well, they're not going to get, they're not going to come out to the, to the ballpark, if you will, right? So that would be my thought on the safety uh, thing. Anything else? Yeah, we got one more here. How do we convince fans that it's okay to enjoy experiences responsibly? Well, I'm going to come up on that. I got a whole section on spectator sports, um, but so I, I, can I say yeah, that? Yeah, hit it. Okay. Yep. Cool. So the office. This is where it happens, right? Strategy, tactics, executional plans, teamwork. It happens in the office. But, you know, I was thinking about what does that look like. And in 1990, McCann Irish had me traveling all over the world. And I had that bloody 10-pound uh, laptop in a bag phone. I looked like, I don't know what, Maxwell Smart, you know, that crazy uh, spy guy, right? And then by 2006, I had my man purse, my Merce. And then that had a little Sony computer that weighed about a pound. And I could run all of Ignition stuff with everybody from it. The entire 2006 at Tortrilli in Torino, all my information came off that little thing. And everybody laughed at me, my little burst, you know. Well, isn't that funny? Because now you look at 2020 and you think of Zoom and, what, you know, Skype. But you know what's interesting? Just a quick sidebar there. What happened to Skype? I don't hear a single person has, has reached out to me and said, hey, Dale, we're going to Skype. You know, must have, I don't know, they, they lost their way or something. Um, but it's, you know, it's interesting. So here's, here's the, the crazy idea of the day for me, all right? So let's take a look at what's happening in the office. A lot of strategizing right about now. Ed Bastian, everybody remember him? Ed, from the Delta days, he's the head dog, right? The CEO of Delta. And he's stating like, hey, Business travel will not come back for three years. I would go, yo, yo, Ed, might take a little longer and maybe never look what it did before. Okay. 
you're at you're in the business okay of making business happen back in the day there wasn't all this zoom and we had to go face to face who remembers the united the great united airlines ad with the guy with the, the plane tickets when his business went bad because it had to go and get with them right so if i'm talking to ed bastion i'm saying ed yo you need to create the new and better zoom what does that look like i think of mikey here so i go hey mikey be like what does it smell like let's just take the, the five senses right um but what is that gonna look like and then i say wait a minute i got it the empty terminals every airport major airport right now think of atlanta chicago what do they have public transportation directly to the to the uh airport then you got the stupid little trains inside the airport and all that good stuff to get around on the terminals i'm going whoa whoa we work i'm after your space i'm going to be delta airlines i'm going to get a hold of all of my frequent flyer holders and tell them hey come on to the airport when you want to have a meeting with people we're open we're safe we're a great place we're air conditioned because and guess what we have public transportation we have the great greatest satellite communications in the world um we got all your data to recruit you yeah i'll be honest with you if i was ignition today in atlanta i would be saying I, i'm thinking of who i i'd go to um um marcy snur and, and i'd say marcy what do you think we all work from home four days a week and we get rid of our office and we meet at the at at, at, at uh, Terminal A in Atlanta once a week to have our different meetings, our group gets togethers, et cetera. I'm telling you, no brainer. And I am gonna reach out to Ed Bastian and, and, and send him that idea. I think that's a, a, a winner in this new age of what we're gonna do. Um, as we start to come out of social, we're, we're always gonna have social distancing. There's never going to be a day when we're all sitting as tight as we used to at ignition, right on top of each other. I don't see that happening ever again. I see there's, you know, I, I, I see space and people, um, you know, practicing, practicing amazingly better hygiene, amazing better, you know, I guess safety, if you will. Um, and then I, I kind of jump away from Delta and it reminds me of the nineties and, and, uh, early 90s late 80s when we when I was at McCann Erickson and we were you know McCann Coke's our biggest client they're having a nervous breakdown because people are starting to realize hey brown sugar water is not exactly the future we've got to diversify we've got to get another stuff who would think you know 40 years later we're selling milk oh, and by the way doing a great job of it but I, I laugh to myself and I always wonder and there's a guy named Chris Millard who's a good friend of ours. I'm not sure he's on this call ever, but um, two, we always talked about two things that we wished we had th rethought, had a chance to rethink. And one was Gatorade. You know, the, the problem for Coke was it had Quaker Oats and we didn't know how to sell in our brains. We weren't selling, you know, uh, oatmeal. And so we, it didn't happen. And PepsiCo scooped it up and boom, the rest is history. We've been chasing that brand for the last, I don't know what it is, 40 years now. And then the other one that we could have gotten scooped up early on was Red Bull. And, and you know, I have to tell you, I don't know whether we would have been able to, to let me say this right. Red Bull's too cool for us. Those guys have done such an amazing job. One of the greatest, I believe, experiential marketing studies on the planet. And so as we sit here and think about this, I wonder what's going on next. What's the next thing? What are these, what are they thinking in these offices? Yeah, who's the, who's the, who's got the, the, the next big execution? The next, oh, that has to fit the proper company's strategy, right? Because we don't have, you know, doesn't fit the strategy, forget about it. So, okay, I'm gonna battle another one. Is there, is anybody have a specific question on, on that notion well there we got a few questions here let me let me just rattle off a few and see if you can respond here so from thomas grant 
how do we deliver our sense of personal touch and personal contact in business if we are doing it virtually? And I think that one, too, coupled with the question we've got from uh, Joe Peterson, how do we make these on-screen meetings like Zoom, et cetera, not be more like beatings? Uh, interesting term, Joe. Uh, how do we increase the engagement uh, out, of, out of those meetings? So I think those two, um, if you can try and give some thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been thinking about this a lot in the last six weeks. So it seems like it's all I'm thinking about. And I, I don't know, number, I think the first way we have to do it for now is we've got to figure out how to have that, that the proper, uh, I don't know, television etiquette, if you will, that the screen looks right and that we're friendly and we're that very directed at each other, looking each other in the eye, that sort of thing. But eventually, I think that the, the, the cool thing is going to be, you better be authentic, okay? Because here's the thing, we're going to meet face to face again, and you better not be hiding behind that TV camera and not walking the talk of whatever that talk might be, right? Um, it's like you better not you better not turn out to be a snake oil salesman. And you know it's funny, uh, it was on 60 Minutes or I forget where I saw it in the news the other day about this, the original steak oil salesman back in the day. And then you, you see on television now, they just are, they're arresting like uh, TV preachers that are saying they got the cure for the, the virus, which is a bunch of baloney, right? So I guess my point is be, be real and, and be sincere that you can't wait to meet that person again, right? And I don't know a single person on this call, I don't probably don't know everybody, but I know this, what you see is what you get. And I can't wait to see, touch, maybe not hug anymore. You know, I don't know, um, we're allowed to do that, but you know, to have that interaction, I, I think that's, that would be my thought right now. Yeah, and um, I'd like to add to that. I think that's an interesting concept. So I was just thinking about, you know, we watched the NFL draft and it was really, I enjoyed it, I think more than, the other draft in the past because um, you really got to be a little bit more personal. I mean, I do wish they had told the the kids that they were on camera so they could have shown their reactions and not just been looking down at their cell phones. But but I think that what it's even shown in the workplace is a little bit more of that we're all human and we have lives outside of the office and people aren't embarrassed to have their kid maybe run by or their dog run by and it it adds a little bit more human touch to the world and to what we're doing and I think that's a good thing but one thing I was thinking about though is a lot of us has really enjoyed seeing like the coaches houses or the celebrities houses <laughs> but what we got to be careful about to Jill's point about being authentic is that we don't get embarrassed about and start trying to up each other's houses and then we, we become materialistic again right so I think that's going to be a balance to see if how do you stay authentic but try not to be the coolest house, the coolest environment, or you know the things that sometimes social media has done is to not show us authenticity, but show us everybody's perfect life. Um, so I think that through this, people have been more authentic. Like I know I've been on business calls and didn't have on makeup and my hair wasn't looking the greatest, but I felt comfortable. I felt comfortable with the people I was meeting with and they saw the real authentic me. So hopefully that's some things that can come through working this way in the future as well right now i'm just gonna jump hey i got a lot more stuff so next we'll week. we'll next week dive in but i want to just go to the spectator sport question because how i'm kind of dreaming about it today is it's like boom the dynamite went off nfl is made for tv it's back to the future smaller crowds the stadiums aren't going to be as full, but the viewership's going to be off the charts because we'll all be watching our phones and our bloody 20-foot screen television sets that Walmart's selling like every day, it seems like. Um, but anyway, here's what I think is going to happen, and it's already happened. Penn State University did it, and I love it. Virtual tailgate. They had their spring game, which they didn't have. But that week, that Saturday, they had a virtual tailgate. And I can just, oh my gosh, I close my eyes and I can 
see it. I could smell it. In Bev and Smithfield sponsor the virtual, you know, tailgate. And everybody's got their cook. They're in the backyards. It's like small gatherings. Maybe it's just family. It'll start with, I'll make it up, four people. Then some states will let you have 10 people in your backyard. And then the next, you know, you got 20 people at your virtual tailgate. You, oh, by the way, we're broadcasting out to ESPN, okay? Because we're competing to have the coolest tailgate for the, 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 the I'll make it up, the Giants hate the Eagles. So, you know, it's that that week, that Sunday, and it's pouring rain in some places. They got it in their garage. They got it going on. And what will happen from that is slowly but surely, those people will slowly but surely matriculate back, and the tailgates will be in the parking lots, and then they're going to be in the stands. And that is how I see it happening, and I see it happening in football for sure. Uh, I think that all of them. You know, it's going to happen. And I, I think that these, you know, it, 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 it'll happen in Europe, too, with football. You know, um, but here's the thing that I just share quickly um, on this. In Europe, it, like they're fortunate, most of these football clubs, because they don't have 60,000 fan stadiums. Right. So it's a little bit of a smaller problem. And I'm sure that Jerry Jones right now probably wishes he didn't have quite as big of a place to have to fill up eventually but maybe i'm wrong maybe that's he's super duper happy about that but i hope that answers the question because that that is absolutely how i personally see this coming back and i just want to before i know we're running out of time i want to just throw out one other thing is in the music sector you know in full disclosure susan and i our next project we're working on this the music world cup i believe in it it's absolutely transcending because this sector hey we all know it's already happening stars are coming off the social media thing like hot takes right but there's not that global competition you think world cup yeah even fifa has already approved us to be part of using that without fighting us it took three years to get that trademark just so you know so anyway but every day I believe the world is going to unite, and I and I believe it's going to be two things that sort of always have been global, and that's music and football, as in soccer. And I think that's going to be a really cool thing. And anybody who wants any information, you holler at me, and I'll. And the website musicworldcup.com, it it does a better explanation than I could ever ever do because we all know I barely know how I barely know who the Rolling Stones are. <laughs> Anyway, so any other questions? I, I cannot, I can't wait to see y'all, you know, yeah, so, face to face. So, uh, soon. so next week, Bill is going to continue with yeah. his thoughts. Um, and we are going to be switching, I think, over to Zoom. We'll get an email out to all of you that are on our email list. Um, and then that way we can all see each other. That's what we're missing. And we want to get it to where we can all see each other. You don't just have to look at, you know, our yeah. wonderful mug shot yeah. here. Um, so, uh, Josh, Josh, turn it over I to Josh. Real quick, though. Anybody has any sectors that they're interested in? I've been working on 20 of them in, in trying to come up with this stuff, researching and whatnot. So anybody has any thoughts of, of hey, Dill, what do you think about this one? I'll research it this week. You just shoot it up, you know, Dill at McCord or Driscoll.com or Josh or however, whatever's the easiest, you feel the most comfortable. And I, I sincerely thank you for uh, coming on board today, who's ever out there. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Dill. Well, as you said, I think there's a lot more to say. We'd love to hear next week. I think we, we missed a question from Adam here, uh, just posing the question about how the interaction between brand clients and agencies and those teams might change in the future. If that's something that maybe you want to noodle on and come back next week, that might be uh, a good topic we can start with. Absolutely. Uh, Yep, great. And we'd also like to recognize Todd as his happy moment related to the family. Todd sounds great. You guys are uh, doing great out there with the kids. Uh, daughter is um, doing her exams for freshman year at Tennessee, which must be interesting. Uh, not sure how all that works anymore. Uh, son got a request uh, for a recruiting call to coach from John Hopkins, and Todd is at home making dinner at a normal time. So all good things. I think a lot very relatable too, Todd. So thanks for sharing that. 
Uh, no dedication for the date. I love your photo. That great fish there. So um, I do encourage you guys. It is fun for all of us to see your photos. So if you haven't shared your wonderful smiling faces with us, we'd, we'd love to see them on the yeah, Intrepid we, Turtle Facebook page. And we'll see you next week on uh, where everybody will have video. So you guys can come on and see everybody else. It'll be a big Brady Bunch type uh, page for you. Um, Dill, I guess to end, we don't have a dedication, but I have a thought that you might have something in mind that we can share with the group here as we say goodbye and, and wish them well for the week ahead. Absolutely. I would dedicate today and, and this week to carry the load. As you all know, we started that walk nine years ago. And it, tonight at six o'clock, they're going to do a virtual kickoff from West Point. We've already been walking now for six days um, around the farm and stuff virtually. And I just, I'm, I get choked up when I think about it. I get really, I'm so proud. We've raised over $25 million in nine years. The money goes to the first responders. It's, it's, it's Memorial Day, guys. It's about people that died. So right now you can imagine what's going on in our world and the money that we're raising and all the police officers and fire guys and nurses and you know for that front line. I just dedicate that to them. And I, I encourage you to take a look, go to carrytheload.org. Um, once again, the website does a much better job than I am explaining the whole routine. And I guess I'm supposed to do awesome. this, right? Hip, hip, hooray! Hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! 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 Thank you, guys. <laughs>